Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a scripture passage today that will set the tone for our message. Uh, it's a very long scripture passage, so you're going to have to bear with me. Stay close, okay? I'm, it's very long, but we're going to dig into it, then I'll pray and d- jump into the message. Y'all ready to go? You got your Bibles? You got your, how many of y'all brought a paper Bible with you? Come on, where's my people? That old school? All right, let's go. Long scripture passage. Everybody get ready. Buckle up. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. It says, for we walk by, everybody say this word, faith, faith and not by sight. Let's pray. God, today we love you. We thank you for your word that is sharper than any two-edged sword, that is living and active and breathing. And today, as the word goes forth, I pray you say it how you want to say it. You move how you want to move. You say exactly what you know we need to hear today. We're going to get out of the way and just say yes, and we give you the glory, honor, and praise for it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, a good, strong. Amen. I like that amen right there. I love uh, this scripture passage. I grew up with this scripture passage. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, what the scripture passage tells me is that you have one of two ways you can walk. One way or another, you're walking. Are you going to choose to walk by faith or are you going to walk by sight? Because there is no other way to do it. All of us are walking in some manner, form, and fashion. How are you going to decide to do it? Now, if you've been a Christian for a long time, where's my faith-filled people at in the room? Come on, faith-filled people. I mean, come on, I love that. You hear, whoa, yeah, they're fired up. I know. I'm a faith-filled person. Sometimes I might have a little too much faith, but I don't know that you can really have too much faith. I think some people will be like, that's unrealistic. I'm like, no, that's faith right there is what that is. Last night, we were tested already. We're getting ready to come preach the word today, and man, here comes the devil with some spiritual warfare on a Saturday night at nine o'clock. My dad, myself, my brother. By the way, my parents are down here on the front row. Can y'all give it up for my family there down here? (laughs) If my dad's on the front row, it's gonna be a good service. I'm just gonna tell y'all, you better get ready. Last last night, we we were getting a little hungry, and when I come into town, I gotta go to God's anointed Torchy's Tacos, I got to hit up Torchy's Tacos. So we order Torchy's. We go pick it up. We're on the way back. We get back to the house. We sit down and we eat. We've been home for about 30 minutes. And my wife goes outside. Now, we have two little mini schnauzer dogs. How many of you have dogs? Anybody have dogs? You, like, you love your dogs. I feel you. How many of y'all got cats? We're praying for you. That's fine. We got, we got our two little mini schnauzers. And we love these dogs. Their name are Kobe, like Kobe Bryant, and Griffey, like Ken Griffey. Come on, somebody. That's our dog there. We love these little dogs. They're like, they're like second kids to us, or I guess third and fourth, because we have two boys. They're here too. We got two dogs. And she goes outside after we eat. She's like, baby, I'm calling the dogs and they're not coming. I'm like, well, they have to come. They're out in the yard. It's fenced in. So she's like, I'm telling you, they're not coming. I've been calling for a while. They're not coming. So I go out there, put my shoes on. I go around one side of the yard. I walk back to the other side of the yard and I realize the dogs are not here. And I really don't want to tell my wife but I had to. And she is freaking out. I I noticed the fence had been left open. The yard folks came and left the fence open. And so I'm like, oh Lord, I got, I got to fix this right now. And so I walk back in there. I'm like, they're not here. I mean, she starts freaking out. I'm like, it's okay. Calm down. We're going to find these dogs. And in my head, I'm like, Lord, please let me find these dogs right now. (laughs) Now in the first service, I didn't tell them the good news that we found the dogs. So I left everybody hanging on there. They're like, that's a terrible story. They just lost all the dogs. I So I'm going to tell you, we found the dogs, but it came in about 30 minutes of panic. I mean, Megan is freaking out. The boys, my youngest, he's crying. Daddy, I'm terrified. And I'm, I just get, it's going to be all right. It's okay. I get in the car. I go driving around and I'm yelling out the window. And then at the same time, I'm like, Lord, please let me find these dogs. Please, Lord God. I got to find these dogs for my wife. Got to do it. And so sure enough, somebody had found both dogs. They came wandering up and it hit me when we pulled into the neighborhood, there was people standing at the front of the neighborhood with two dogs on a leash and they're waving, pointing. We're like, what are those people? Those dogs look kind of familiar, but I didn't think they were my dogs. I mean, my dogs are at the house. So as soon as she said the dogs were gone, I went, I know who has them. She's like, how do you know who has them? I'm like, I saw them. You saw them and you didn't go get them? I'm like, no, I I didn't mean to. I didn't know they were our dogs. I thought they were there. (laughs) And needless to say, after about 30 minutes of canvas in the neighborhood, the dogs were returned to us and I was praising God. But I had a moment where my faith was tested. I'm sitting there going, Lord, what do I do? I even said at one point, you know what? We we might find them tomorrow. She's like, tomorrow? That ain't gonna work for me. We're gonna find them. But my faith was tested. We walk by faith and not by sight. How many of you have ever had your faith tested by what you see within your physical sight? Now, I've had some stories. I could tell you story after story after story. But one thing that has remained the same is every time I put my trust in God, he shows up again and again and again. He's never failed me, and he won't start now. Come on, somebody. He, will, he won't start now. 
You just got to have faith. You got to have, you got to have faith. And I'm telling you, we're going to look at a, at a man's name in this Bible called Abraham. This Bible is full of people that you can learn from how to operate by faith. And most of them had struggles and issues way worse than what we dealt with. Most of them had stories. You ever go through a moment and you're like, God, why is this happening to me? God's like, well, somebody down the line is going to need your story. That's why we say, man, God will take your test and turn it into a testimony. He'll take your mess and turn it into a message. God, I don't like the mess, but I want a message. He's like, then you got to go through some mess. Because scripture says in this world, you're going to have some trouble. Yeah. Slap that on your fridge. Ain't nobody doing that. <laughs> God, I don't want the trouble. But he says, I promise I'm going to be with you in the middle of the trouble. Take heart. Walk by. Walk by faith. We're going to look at Abraham, Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to skip around through 10 chapters or so. I'm going to read you about nine verses. And then we're going to look at how this applies to our life today. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. It says, the Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. At this point, this is the very first conversation you'll find God and Abraham having. Is Abram 75 years old. Skip five chapters to Genesis 17. When Abram was 99 years old, 24 years later, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. And then I will make my covenant between me and you, and you will greatly increase in numbers. So 24 years later, it tells us in verse 17 of that chapter, he's now 100. He would have a son named Isaac. This is the son they prayed and believed for for 24 years, and they finally have him at 100 years old. Fast forward five more chapters, Genesis 22. It says, sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain that I will show you. There's a theme that you're going to see in Abraham's life. Now, most scholars will tell you based off tradition that they believe Isaac was about 37 years old when God had Abram go sacrifice him on the mountain, told him, I want you to go. So if he's 37 years old and he was born when Abraham was 100, this would mean that Abraham is now 137 years old. The first time that God would show up and speak to Abraham, he was 75. So if he's now 137, this has been 62 years later. And now the thing that God blessed him with that he prayed and believed for forever, God is saying, I want you to take him and let go of him. I want you to go. 62 years later, what this tells me today, I'm 39 years old. I'm about to be 40, y'all. It's, it's a crazy time in my life. I'm about to be 40 years old. Isn't that wild? That's crazy. Where's my people 40 and over? over? Where y'all at? Come on. I'm about to join you. I'm on the way there. And I'm sitting there thinking, 62 years? 62 years? Well, so you're telling me when I started my relationship with God, he was saying, go? And still 62 years later, he's saying, Go? And this is what I want you to hear based off what we see in Abraham's life that's going to always be the same for our own. You never stop in a relationship with God hearing the same thing over and over and over again. Go, and I'll show. You go, and I'll show. But God, I already did that one time. I think I'm safe right here. But God loves you too much to leave you where he found you. Because God loves you right where you are, but he, too, he loves you too much to leave you in the condition that he found you in. And if you're following Jesus, that means you got to be moving because he's always moving. The spirit is always working and always moving. And if you're not following, you are standing still, and that is by sight. But last time I checked, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 tells me we walk by faith. faith. How do we walk by faith? You're telling me. That 62 years later, I still got to operate in faith. Faith is the basis and foundation of our Christianity. God is always going to call you to go, let go, move, give, sacrifice, serve. Because you don't go with God. You don't go from success to success. You go from sacrifice to sacrifice. He's always going to say, you go and I'll show. You go and I'll show. But no, 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 no. God, it should be the other way around. Show me. And then I'll do what your word says. Come on, y'all ever had those moments where you start negotiating with God? You're like, God, if you show up right now, I will never cuss again. I'll never do it, I promise, God. You said that prayer like five days ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all get in those moments. God, if you do this, I'll do this. Faith is always built on you do this and watch what I will do in return. You go and I'll show. The title of my message today is It's Time to Go. 
Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him right now, real strong, it's time to go. You need, a, you need a little fire under you. It's time to go. Come on, additional seating. Come on, you better get it. It's time to go. It's time to go. I feel like God sent me on assignment here today to light a fire in some people to say, it's time to move in faith. And in order to move by faith, you gotta walk to do it. It doesn't say you show up in faith. You sit still in faith. You do this. It says you walk by faith. Now, faith is taking the first step when I can't see the second step. But we're like, I, I'll take the first step when I can see what it's going on right there in front of me. Now, the Bible says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We want the word to be a spotlight way down the road. And when I can see it, I'll start moving. And God's going, no, one more step, I'll illuminate it. One more step, I'll light it up. You just keep walking in faith because as long as he's going before you, you're going to be all right. We walk by faith and not by sight. The word go in the Bible is mentioned roughly 1,145 times. The word stay is mentioned 38 times. I venture to say there's a theme in this relationship with God that is always gonna be, it's time to go. How many of you ever made a faith move? You make the move, and then after you make the move, you start getting real comfortable, and God's like, it's time to go again. It's time to give again financially. It's time to accept the serve schedule for the dream team. It's time to get in an HC group. It's time to go through HC Connect. It's time to go to midweek chapel. You're like, God, but I just did the last thing. And he's like, I know, you do, you do some more. Because here, check, check, the, check this out. Your expectation will determine your experience. And you never lose in an exchange with God. You take a step in faith, he will give you more than you ever bargained for. Because Ephesians 3.20 tells us that my God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can ask, think, or imagine by faith. By faith. It's time to go. In Hebrews 11.8, in the New Testament, Abraham's been gone for thousands of years, and it says, by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive his inheritance, he obeyed and went, even though he didn't know where he was going. Because obedience is our job. Outcome is God's. And it doesn't say you be obedient when you know the outcome. That's not faith. Faith is, I don't know how this is going to work out. This is outlandish. But I'm here to tell somebody today, if I can help you at all, I'm here to spark some faith in some people to say, it's time to go. Come on, if you believe that, give God some praise. It's time to go. He can do more. Faith. We have a, we have a few problems that keep us from moving in faith that I see in my own life. And you see in Abram's story right here in Scripture, the first problem we have is we have to see to believe. <laughs> but faith is walking without seeing. That's faith. It's constantly walking. In Genesis 16, before they ever had Isaac, Sarai, his wife, says, the Lord has kept me from having children. So because they didn't see anything, they decided to take matters into their own hands. Some of the best prayers that God can answer for us are with the word no. The gift of no is what we call it with our kids. They like to ask us for all kinds of stuff. They're 13, 11. Daddy, can I this? Daddy, can I that? I'll look at them just like this. I'll be like, no. <laughs> this old man, he said, no. <laughs> Any, many, miny, no. <laughs> you can do the gift of no however you want it, but aren't you glad that some prayers you prayed God did not answer? Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I prayed for some stuff that I look back and I'm like, ooh, life would have been rough if God would have answered that one. Because <laughs> God has your best in mind, and if he gave you everything you prayed for, then he wouldn't be working all things for your good. He'd be working all things for your comfort and your selfishness. No, God, I'm here to operate in, in faith. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 1, Jesus is doing miracles. He just left in Matthew chapter 15, breaking the loaves and the fish and feeding thousands of people. Incredible miracle. He feeds all these people. And then go to the next chapter, verse 1. The Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Then Jesus left them and went away. Because the Pharisees had a mentality of you show and I'll know. Because the world's formula is this. The world's formula is show and I'll go. But God's formula is go and I'll show. You want to believe God for big things and see him do them? Well, you're going to have to put some faith because faith without works is, is dead. So we walk by faith, meaning faith is always moving. Faith is never standing still, meaning when I don't understand, while I'm waiting, I'm working. While I'm waiting, I'm getting this word in my heart. While I'm waiting, I'm praying. While I'm waiting, I'm worshiping. While I'm praying, I'm still staying faithful in my relationship because I'm walking by faith, but I don't see it. It doesn't feel good, but I trust in God. 
my Savior. He's never left me. He's never failed me. And I know he's not going to start now. I think back in times in my life where I had moments where I could not handle a thing. And years and years ago when our kids were little babies, toddlers, we had a financial moment we had no idea how to handle. And I'll never forget, my wife was distraught that night, and I still had to wake up and go, go to work the next day. We still got to do life. And I remember I'm going to iron my pants to get ready for work the next day, because life still goes on, and I'm just, I'm bawling crying. And I'm listening to, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. And as that song started to wash over my spirit and my soul, I just felt this peace come over me. And God said, Kevin, do you trust me? I did exactly what y'all just did. Hmm. <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, I felt this peace come over me, and I said, God, I, I trust you. You know what I'm finding here 11 years later as I'm still following Jesus faithfully? He's never stopped asking me, Kevin, do you trust me? And he got me through the last thing where it required trust and faith. He will get me through the next one. If I go through the fire, he's going to be there. If I'm dealing with lions, he's going to show by faith. We're going to walk by faith because it's already there. His promises are yes and amen. The second problem I see is this. We have to have the details first. God, I'll go as soon as you give me the details. We all go through this at times. You ever got a word and you're like, I don't know if that was God or the devil. You ever had one of those moments? That, that couldn't have been God. God's like, God's like, I, I want you to go plant a church. And I remember being like, this is awesome. And nine months later, this thing happened called COVID. And I was like, God, I don't think I heard you correctly. I think that was something there. I don't know who, what that's about. And God's like, nope, go and I'll show. But God, this doesn't feel right. My timing is not your timing. Walk by faith. I had to have all the details. We were, in, uh, we were in the good old international house of pancakes about two Christmas Eves ago. Come on, IHOP fans, where y'all at? <laughs> we, go, we go to IHOP. Y'all are like on Christmas Eve. Yeah, so it was family tradition of my brother-in-law. So we're like, all right, cool. We're going up in there. And there are, how many of you know you've been in situations, there's times where you should have gone already, but you stuck around for some reason when you should have left. I was in one of these moments. We're sitting there at the table. IHOP is full of people, a lot of people. We're just enjoying ourselves. We got like 12 of us out there. And all of a sudden, we start hearing some commotion back in the kitchen. So I look back there, and there's this man standing back there. And he's, ah, I, got, I, I mean, he's going off on this. He's going off on this lady. This lady behind the counter, she's throwing plates. Ah, and we're like, whoa, what is happening? And it's escalating pretty quickly. Now, for the first couple of minutes, I'm like, y'all don't look at them. Just eat your food. Head down. Just eat your food. Don't look at them. But then, but then after this went on for a couple of minutes, there started going commotion within the table. Like, should we leave? I'm like, no, 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 this too shall pass. See what I'm saying? Just stay, keep, keep eating. And a moment came over me where, listen, I'm a pastor, but I got to pass. You know what I'm saying? Like, back in the day, your boy went by the name of A. Kizzle, okay? <laughs> and A. Kizzle was about to go. It was one of these. I remember I ate a bite, and I'm like, I've had enough of this. Throw my napkin down. I'm about to get up and do something. As soon as I got up, Somebody ran inside and said, he's got a gun. And I'm like, go, get out. Everybody go, 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 go. Everybody's filing into the restroom. Everybody's filing into the restroom. And then I go into this mode of, I'm about to, I'm about to save the day. Now, listen, before I tell you the ending of the story, disclaimer, if you're ever in this situation, do not follow what I did. I'm not a safety professional, okay? All I know was in that moment was I got to figure out how to get out of here. I grab my brother. We go out the side door. We walk around. They're out front. And I'm like, do they see? I'm, I trust in God. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going out the door. And, and we get in the car. We leave. Blessed and highly favored. We leave. We pull up to the side door. Everybody piles in and we get home. I'm like, praise God. And I'm sitting there thinking that could have been a lot worse. Somebody came out talking about the man shot twice. We're like, oh my God, this was crazy. Christmas Eve. And we're all like adrenaline rushing. I get to the house. I open up Instagram. And my wife was on Instagram, and she's like, everybody, right now, we are in the bathroom at the International House of Pancakes. We are about to flee the scene. It's an active shooter situation. We're hostages. Call somebody. Pray to God. Right now, we got to get out of here. And I'm like, what did you do? What are you doing? I had people texting me all over the country. Pastor friends like, did you make it? Are you okay? We made it. We're all right. But here's the deal. I could have left way earlier. But because I didn't really know what was going on and we're gonna fill this situation out before we make a move, I stayed and it put us in a place that could have been dangerous when we should have left a long time ago. Some of us have been in a position that God has been telling us to leave and we're like, let me just see what happens next. And God is saying, it's time to go. It's time to go. Every time I pass an IHOP now, I'm like, I shake a little bit. I'm like, 
Ain't going back in the, ain't going back in the IHOP. I see so many instances in scripture where people needed details and God does a miracle with no details. Jesus shows up, Luke 17. There's 10 lepers. He saw them from a distance, it says, and they're like, master teacher, touch us. And from a distance, he says, go, show yourself to the priest and you'll be cleansed as you go. Because as you go, the healing and cleansing happens. You don't get cleaned up to go to God. You go to God to get cleaned up. And so many of us are waiting, God, you clean me up right here, and then I'll move. And he's like, that's not faith. Faith is when you show up and say, I know I was a wreck on Saturday night, but I came in the house of the Lord expecting to meet with God, and my faith says, I gotta keep moving. I gotta keep moving. I see another story of the rich young ruler. This is a man who came to Jesus, and he said, Master, teacher, what do we gotta do to be saved and inherit eternal life? What do we gotta do? Jesus is like, yeah, it's real easy. It's so simple. It's so easy. Take everything that you have, sell it all, and give all the money to the poor. That's it. That's all you got to do. And it says that the man walked away sorrowful because he wanted more details than that, but God's details that he usually gives are just go. It's time to go. I see a man in John 5 at the pool of Bethesda. He's been lame, sitting on his mat for many, many years, and Jesus walks up and changes his whole world in a moment. He heals the man, and he says, now get up, take your mat, and go. His, his faith to go changed everything. We don't know in a lot of these stories when miracles actually happened, but we see through many instances that the miracle happened when they made a move. We always think it's on the other end of, I gotta walk in the church service, I, I gotta feel a goosebump the right way. They better play my song. If they play my song, it's gonna be a good Sunday, but they didn't play my song. Maybe again next week. If you are leaving your relationship with God and your faith up is up to chance, chances are 100% likely your faith will never be active. Because I'm not going to leave my faith up to chance. I'm going to get in this book. I'm going to get around faith-filled people. I'm going to trust in God and watch what he can do. I'm going to watch what God can do. In Joshua chapter 1, Moses, you've all seen the prince of Egypt. Moses has died, and he's exited the scene, and God shows up to Joshua, who's going to be the new leader. And he tells him, hey, here, here's what's going on. The death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, go to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel, every place that they set the sole of their foot and tread upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. Now, this isn't a moment of it's going to take some faith because what I see tells me I ain't supposed to move nowhere. But that word tread actually means this. I did a little study on what is tread. What exactly does that mean? Tread means to crush under your feet. It means walking by faith looks a little bit like this. Like there's a little bit of a swagger. Like, you know what? And maybe it starts by, I'm just so scared. But what happens is after years of watching God answer prayers and do miracles and bring healing, you start going, oh, I already saw what happened on the last one. So I'm going to step up in faith and I'm going to tread or whatever the enemy's throwing my way. But it came in a moment of, I don't know how we're gonna do this. I don't know that that's the answer, God. God ever tell you something? And you're like, I don't know that that's the answer, God. I don't know. It doesn't make much sense, God, but God doesn't operate in reality. He made reality. He can change it if he wants to. I'm gonna trust in God. The third problem I see is that we question everything. Everything. How many of y'all know somebody who's just suspicious about everything? Anybody know that person? Suspicious about everything. Uh, I love my wife so much, and she makes me a lot better because I'm one of these people who I'm not suspicious about nothing. I just, first time I meet you, I'll be like, we're best buddies. And she'll be like, you remember the last time you did that? that? That person, they said this, they did that. I'm like, okay. We go in Walmart one day. We walk in Walmart, and as we're walking in, I mean, we're looking at towels or something. I'm just alone for the ride. We're looking at towels, and she grabs me so fast. Kevin, do you see that man right there? I'm like, what about him? He's watching that lady. Do you see the way he's watching that lady? And I'm, I'm looking up, I'm like, I'm like, it's nothing. Just, you know, let's keep it moving. It's nothing. She's like, no, I saw this on an Instagram video. They will come in Walmart. They will come in Walmart. And there's, there's another one around here somewhere. I don't know where he's at. I know he's around here. They're, they're going, they're going, what? They're watching this. I'm going to go tell her. And I'm like, no, 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 please do not go tell her. Don't go talk to her. She's kneeling down there. She's like, I'm going right now. She goes, I'm like, oh Lord, I'm sitting there like, you're going to make me have to fight somebody. I don't want to fight nobody today. She goes up to this lady, leaning down. She's like, excuse me, ma'am. Do you know that that man right there is watching you? And I'm over there going, Lord, Lord. 
<laughs> the lady, she looks, she looks all weird. She's like, uh, okay. So she gets up and leaves. She's like, now I'm going to go talk to him. I'm like, please do not go talk to him. Please do not. We do not need, this is not, this does not concern us. It does not. Con- no, they're going to take her and they're going to take her. I'm like, you do not, we're in Walmart. You do not know that. Anyway, she's like, I'm going to go get him. So she walks up. She's like, where'd he go? I watch her. I'm kind of behind the scenes just watching. Like if I got to jump in, I will. She goes behind the, the shelving and she pops out. She's like, what are you doing, sir? I see you watching that lady. Man, this dude whipped out his wallet so fast, he said, ma'am, we are lost prevention and you just blew our cover. We've been watching this woman for months and you just blew our cover. I'm back there going, <laughs> hey, forgive us, I'm sorry. I'm gonna take her out the store right now. We walk outside, on the way out, she's like, look, I think that man's watching that. I'm like, that man ain't watching that lady out here. We, we question everything and we do this in our relationship with God. God says something, but I know what I see. And God's like, everything that you see ain't what it is because I'm doing things when you have no idea I'm working. And when God is up to nothing and it looks like that in your world, he is still up to something. We just get caught up questioning everything. And you see this in Mark chapter six. You see, Jesus is doing these miracles. The Pharisees show up once again. All these people, he's doing miracles. And they start questioning, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. And it says that he left there and he could do no mighty works, no miracles. Because they started questioning what they saw. When we walk by faith, we don't question. We just go into the fire because he was with me in the last one. He'll be with me in this one. So I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to walk by faith. Sometimes we got to get some people out of our world in order to do it. In Mark chapter 9, you have a man that shows up to Jesus. And his, his young son is demon-possessed. And he shows up to Jesus. He says, Jesus, Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things are possible then they're all possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. This might be the best prayer and thing that I can give you today. I go through a lot of moments, planting a church, pastoring is the hardest thing I've ever done. But God's grace has been bigger and better than it's ever been. And I go into these moments and I'm like, God, I don't know what to do. And I'll say, God, help me with my unbelief. Help me with my, some of us in order to walk by faith need some help with our unbelief. How do we get some help with our unbelief? First thing you gotta do is change what you can see. You gotta change what you can see. Mark chapter eight, Jesus comes to Bethsaida and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up, and he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Notice before the miracle happened, he led him out of the town. Because sometimes in order for God to change you, he's got to change where you're at. Because God cannot keep you in your condition and, and, and just let you stay there. He loves you too much to leave you there. So sometimes he's got to get you out of the relationship. He's got to get you out of the job that keeps you from church on Sunday morning. He's got to get you out of the thing that's causing you to never have any money because you're blowing it on the right. He's got to get you out of those things. Maybe you're on the other side and you're like Mark chapter five. There was a man who had a little girl who's 12 years old and she died. And Jesus says, she's not dead, she's sleeping. So he shows up. It says in verse 40, when he had put them all outside, he took the father and mother of the child and those who were with him and he entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which is translated little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked for she was 12 years old and they were all overcome with great amazement. Sometimes if you want God to change your life, you have to tell some things to get out. You cannot love God passionately and listen to music that is against God's word. Now, this might be a little old school. You cannot continue to watch movies that are full of the language you're trying to stop and expect to stop. You can't expect to break an addiction of alcohol and continue to go to the bar every single weekend. I don't know about y'all, but I want some freedom and some transformation. So therefore, I have some stuff I'm going to say you need to get out. I don't have room for you. You gotta tell some things to get out of your life at times. Joshua and Caleb in Numbers 13 were in this place. 12 spies went out to survey the promised land. 10 of them came back with a bad report. Two of them came back and said, we can surely take it for our God said it was ours. 
I don't know a whole lot. I'm not the brightest guy in the world. But what I do know is this book has never failed me. God is, he's gonna stand on what his word said because it says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word is God. I'm gonna operate full of faith. I need this more than I can ever tell you. And that leads me to point two there is you gotta focus on what you can't see. You change what you can see and then focus on what you can't see. 2 Corinthians 4, 18, while we do not look to the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You gotta focus on heaven. You gotta focus on what's ahead. Because if you're operating in a relationship with God, your best days are ahead, everybody. Your best days are ahead, everybody. Come on, God should get some praise like you know your best days are ahead. When you're walking by faith, you have no choice but to walk into blessings and miracles and more opportunities for you to experience the presence of God. But I gotta focus on what I can't see. And lastly, you just, you just gotta go. Just go. My message today is it's time to go. Look at your neighbor, tell him it's time to go. I don't know what thing that you haven't moved on that God's been telling you. Some of you have been coming here for a long time and you've never gone through HC Connect to get plugged into the dream team. I'm telling you, your life will transform when you begin to serve others. Your life will transform when you begin to build the house of the Lord. Some of you, God's been pressing upon you. It's time to give and tithe and you're just so afraid and God's saying, walk in faith and watch what I will do. And walking in faith is, again, I'm going to do it because I know what God said. I know what he did the last time. I watched what he did in there. So I'm going to keep walking in faith. Some of you have never gotten in a group, but you hear us talk about it all the time. It's time to get in an HC group because groups will change your life. You get around other faith-filled people who have been through some stuff. How many of y'all been through some stuff and God's been good? See these hands lifted? Come on, if you've been faith-filled because God's done some stuff, in you, you need to find some of these people and get around them. You need to get in a group. Psalms 143.10 says, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. There's a land that God leads you through. And wherever you go, he goes. If you just go, he shows. God will always, he'll always hold up his word, everybody. If he said it, he'll do it. Some of you have heard the promises of God your whole life and you haven't seen them. Keep going keep going. It's time to go. God will never fail you. I don't care what you see in front of you. Everything is worth it on the other end of a faith move. It's time to go. It's time to go. Joshua chapter six, the promised land started with this same thing. Go and I'll show. Asking the Lord, Joshua said, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city once, you and all the men of war. You shall go around the city once. This you shall do six days. Seven priests. And it says the seventh day you shall march around the city, blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat. That's a really good story. But I've noticed something the more and more I've studied this over the years is that they walked for six days. They shouted one time. Too many of us don't have the walk down, but we expect the shout to work. And the shout only works when you work the walk. You work the walk by faith. You work the walk and you just keep, I don't see it, but I'm gonna trust God. I'm gonna keep walking. And as I keep walking, as the shout begins to lift inside of me and I trust what that word tells me, I begin to shout and I know the walls are going to fall. My God said it. He will do it. He's never failed me. But you got to work the walk. You got to work the walk. And this is where the story really grabbed my attention this week. If you fast forward 12 chapters, Joshua 18, it says the country was brought under their control, but there were still seven tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. So Joshua said to the Israelites, how long will you wait? I came today to tell you, friends, God is asking you, how long will you wait? It's time to go. There's no need to think about what God told you. If he said it, he meant it. And when you go in faith, he will always do what he told you. But it's time to go. How long are you going to wait? 
I don't know what your condition looks like. Maybe you came in here like the man who had four friends that lowered him through the roof and your body needs some healing or your finances need a touch from God. When he came down and they lowered him through the roof, Jesus looked at him and he said, get, your sins are forgiven. Get up, take your mat and go. Your healing is on the other end of go. Maybe that's how you came. I need healing in my body. I need some work in my finances. I gotta figure out a job situation, a crisis. Maybe you came in here and you don't really know Jesus, or you did at one point, and you wandered away from God. My favorite story in Scripture, John chapter 8, the woman caught in adultery. All the people come out, stones in hand, they're ready to stone this woman, because that's what the law said, and Jesus said, he without sin cast the first stone. All of them, one by one, drop their stones and leave, and I picture this woman, whew, in the middle of her mess, she looks up, and all she sees is Jesus. Smile on his face. Woman, where are your accusers? Come on, give me your hand. Neither do I accuse you. And what did he tell her? He said, now just get up and go and sin no more. Because God doesn't care what you did yesterday. He cares what you're going to do right now. He cares what you're going to do right now. And here's the deal. You can't go until you leave. I know that's so profound but you can't go until you leave. Here as we close the service today, this is what I want you to do. I'm gonna begin to pray for you. And as you begin to know that God is speaking to your heart, I want you to begin to stand on your feet and say, God, I'm going. Right now, I'm gonna make some declarations. God, today here in this room, watching online at every campus, Trove Heights in Nashville, some of us, God, have been so afraid, but today we're making a decision to walk by faith. We're gonna go in Jesus' name. We're declaring, I'm all in. If you said it, you meant it, I trust it, and I'm all in today. Come on, if you believe it's time to go, come on, begin to get on your feet, lift your hands, praise to the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. God, we trust you. Oh, we trust you, Jesus. Come on, just honor him for a moment. Whatever he told you, begin to declare, I'm all in by faith, by faith. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, come on, worship him. Worship the King of Kings. Woo. Him. And I trust, I trust in, in God. God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Come on, go right here. Let's go. And I trust in God. Come on, say it. My Savior, the one. Come on, let it go. Walk out of here saying, I'm all in. Ooh, you're worthy, Jesus. He will never fail. Oh, listen to me now. This is where things begin to change in your world when you have a moment like that all on your own. Oh, I trust in God. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I trust you. Oh, I'm all in, Jesus. And you just begin to worship him with your own soul. God, today I trust you. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I love you, Jesus. Come on, I came up in church where we used to sing, I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Just voices. I exalt thee. Oh. Just for a moment. Oh, I exalt thee. Thank you, Jesus, mighty God. I exalt thee. Mighty God. I exalt thee. Oh. Come on, every head bowed, every eye closed, watching online. Jesus, we love you. We're so thankful for what you're speaking to us today, what you're doing in our lives. Today, God, anybody who's had a moment of fear and they've been operating out of sight today, I pray it changes in the name of Jesus. As I pray, chains are breaking, people are moving, things are happening because we're moving in faith. 
We thank you for it in Jesus' name, God. I pray you stir hearts. We're leaving different and changed in Jesus' name. We're going to watch what you do. Our answer is yes and amen in Jesus' name. If you came in this room or watching online or at one of our campuses, and you know you're far from God, maybe you're like that woman who you know you just need to go and sin no more. Today, do that. Make that decision right now. Maybe you said that prayer at one point. You wandered away from God. Today, it's as simple as I don't care what you did yesterday. Just come on. Let's go. It's time to go. If that's you and you're in this room watching online right there where you're at as an act of faith, lift your hand high. God, I need you. Jesus, I need to give you everything. All that I have, I give to you today. Come on. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love it. All right. Now, everybody, all voices, say a prayer with me like this. Say, Jesus, today I give you my life. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth. You're my Savior. You are my Lord. I'm going to live for you for the rest of my days. I'm going by faith. I'm all in. In Jesus' name, all God's people said a good amen. Come on, let's celebrate. Anybody that said that prayer, come on. 